the new version of Cascadeur, you can now control all the physics parameters with only four sliders. Here I'm going to show you what each of them does. Let's take this animation as an example. So first, let's turn on all the physics. It's a good idea to make the center of mass trajectory visible in the viewport so we could better see the changes the author physics makes. Now only the physics correct is working, so let's enable the first slider, which is smooth trajectory. Lower values make less changes to the initial animation. The higher the value is, the smoother the trajectory will become. For this animation here, it would mean the character will squat lower before and after the jump. So let's compare it once again. Lower values make the character appear rather stiff, when the higher values make it much more lively. However, the poses before and after the jump have been changed a lot. Now let's check out the next slider, which is called Smooth Rotation. I'll set it to a high value so you could better see how it works. In the original animation, the character starts turning sharply and then stops rather abruptly. With smooth rotation applied, the character pre-rotates the body to gain the momentum and then keeps some of the inertia from this rotation at the end. The level of this effect will really depend on the kind of the animation you're making. Now, the next slider is compensation motion. It also helps to smoothen the trajectory of the center of mass and helps the character keep balance. In some cases, setting this value too high may lead to breaking the pose. You can set the compensation value for each point separately in the Object Properties tab under Compensation Motion. The higher the muscle stiffness value is, the less changes it's going to make to the original animation. This parameter can be animated, and to animate it on multiple frames at once, make sure the Apply on Selected Interval button is on. Then select the keyframes you want to change, and set a different value for them. By default, the character would use their arms and legs to compensate. And finally, let's enable secondary motion. The higher the value is, the more overlaps you will see in the character's animation. Same as with compensation motion, you can set up secondary motion value for each point separately. The local blending value shows how close to the original the animation will stay. Higher value means less changes to the original. Setting it all the way to 100 practically disables secondary motion for this point. Check out the way the character's left arm behaves now. Almost no overlaps. But setting it back to a lower value makes it overlap much more. The damping value controls the number and frequency of the bounces. Setting this value too low will make it bounce too much. Higher values will make the bounces decay faster. Higher air friction value will also dampen the bounces, it will slow down the animation and make it fall back a little. And since all of these parameters can be animated as well, make sure that you've selected all the frames you want to change and apply on selected interval button is on. With that said, working with sliders only will be enough in most case scenarios.